Yo, hey there everybody. Uh, so, today's special day, gonna be upgrading the old uh, gravelly commuter bike here. And uh, got some uh, new parts up at the shop. Gonna convert it over to a one by system. Uh, first we're gonna get up to the shop and clean everything up and I'll kinda show you the state of what this bike's looking like right now. So the bike's in a pretty sad state of affair here. So um, most of the components on it, drivetrain wise, were original to when I built the bike, uh, and it was they were actually used then. Most of them, so pretty rough. Chain rings are really worn out. Chain would hardly sit on them anymore. Uh, it just rode really rough, and the whole front derailleur thing kind of always bugged me on this bike. Um, the uh, rear derailleur was starting to uh, starting to get a lot of play within it, and the chain would sometimes get caught down in between the pulley and the cage. And every time I'd hit uh, bumpy terrain and stuff, so um, you know, and then it, it had excessive play there in the in the main pulley body from the actual derailleur body. These things would, you know, eventually would, that would just fall out of there, so. The cassette, <clears throat> it was 1128. The rings in front I had were a 5034, but this is that deal that I cobbled together. It's actually an 11-speed cassette with a 13-tooth cog removed, so it would fit on the 10-speed free hub body. Uh, so, anyway, here's my the bits there that I got for it. I got the single-speed X-Sync one by chain ring, I chose a 46. I ordered a, the little bolt kit thing there with the little spacers to use your regular uh, chain ring bolts, but it actually came with one, so didn't actually need the one. Um, but the chain ring, it's got the narrow, wide teeth profile, and then it's kind of inset towards the inside, which I kind of worried a little if this was going to clear my frame, which is should clear most frames. Mine's kind of a unique deal because I built the frame. I uh, got the just the basic uh, inexpensive SRAM PC1130, which is I think their least expensive 11-speed chain, which are about 24 bucks or something. Uh, chain ring was uh, 89, and then I went with this Sunrace cassette, which it was pretty economical. The 65 is the retail price on it, and it actually was a lot nicer than I'd hadn't actually seen one of these that I can re recall that you know out of the box or anything so um, yeah it seemed pretty decent I'll probably try to do a long-term review on this after I get quite a few miles on it um, but it's a an 1142 and um, it's the kind of the Dynasys style so it will it's actually 11 speed cassette but it will fit on the 10 speed free hub body uh, and then for the derailleur, I went with the rival, the one by derailleur there. And this one will accommodate up to a 42 tooth uh, cog in the rear. Um, so it's got the exact actuation, actuation. So it will work with my 11 speed force road bike shifter. And. Uh, yeah, it's got a it's got the little roller clutch thing there, so keeps that chain on there. Uh, so anyway, removing the old bits here. Before we get into that, let's uh, let's just back up a little and nerd out here just for a minute. So this is just kind of an overlay of uh, all the red bars are going to be my complete gear range with the new 46. Uh, the 11 through the 42, and then the blue and the green bars are basically my old uh, 5034 combo chain ring with the 1128. So this is just kind of an overlay of all the gears lined down against each other. So 31 possible gear ratios, and I kind of wanted to shoot for a little, a little more low end. Uh, I did a ride a little while back where gravel ride with some pretty big hills, and I was, I was struggling on the low end. I had it in my 34 28 and if I wanted something a little lower so you can see that first bar that's going to be my uh, the 46 42 so I got a little lower in gear and didn't sacrifice much on the on the top end there so you're probably wondering maybe what those numbers represent 
you know the twos ones threes whatever so that's just the gear ratio to determine any gear ratio on really any bike you just divide the big ring by the small ring so this is an easy example I've got my bike set up in the 3913 so essentially 39 you know 13 goes into 39 three times so technically what you'll see is for each one revolution of the crank the rear wheel is going to spin around three times so that's two coming up and then I start the crank right back in the original position lined up with the seat post that little white mark sits right there in front of the brake pad so that's a, would be a three to one gear ratio so you're probably wondering well what does that mean real life wise so I got this little found this little chart bikecalic.com which this will calculate any gear ratio with any tire size and any cadence and then all the red green blue numbers there in the middle those are all uh, just the speed that you'll be going in that gear ratio at any given uh, cadence there so I wanted to see that's with 38 C tire I wondered what it would look like if I did a 25 C and it changed a little not a lot um, but you can kind of see you know if you want to look at this one and then I've got one here with the uh, the 46 um, but you know basically the the main differences between the the one by and then the double on my particular application it I feel like on a commuter bike or a gravel bike, you don't necessarily need the really the close ratios. You know, if you're racing on a road bike and you're doing crits, especially on a flat, fast course, you really need those tighter, you know, 1125 or 1123, you know, close gears just because you're, you know, come out of a corner or something, you don't want some big jump and, um, you know, the speeds aren't going to vary much, but you're, you, you kind of want to stick in that same range. So anyway, that's kind of a good little, uh, something to look at there as far as the real world, what it's actually going to feel like. So anyway, putting the bits on the bike here and you can see how that largest cog there is kind of offset in and that's how they get away with, uh, stacking those 11 gears onto the 10 speed you know that bigger gear that far out the spokes are dished in somewhat so you've got your clearance um, before I put the derailleur on I wanted to make sure my derailleur hanger was straight because I've definitely the past couple months wrecked this bike quite a few times riding in icy conditions uh, I had this old FSA bottom bracket on there which I wasn't planning on switching but you know once I got the cranks out and everything it felt pretty bagged out so I went ahead and just put a uh, Shimano outboard bearing bottom bracket and I put this little spacer there between the the drive side cup and the frame because I needed a little extra clearance that chain ring was just super close there to the frame and long story short I ended up just removing the spacer and dimpling the frame there just a little bit you know needed to be done anyway so did that everything worked better uh, so yeah that's what we did there there's the little dimple got some decent clearance now and uh, so yeah we're got the derailleur on I'm just adjusting first thing I wanted to just adjust the high low limit screws here just kind of get everything uh, in the ballpark I guess you could say before I hooked up the shift cable there I got the housing looped in but the cables not hooked up yet so Basically just, you know, high limit, get that upper pulley just below the cog, and then same thing with the uh, low limit, you just got to push it over by hand. Um, I went ahead and pulled the derailleur, you know, that's going to be the routing there. So it's easiest if you lock the uh, little pulley cage down. You know, if you're removing the wheel, you, you could pull that little, pull the pulley cage down and then just push the little lock button in. It rests up against that little nub there and it holds it in place. So it's easiest to route the cable with it down as well. So anyway, cable goes around the loop through the little hole and then out, down, and around just like so on the little pinch bolt there. So uh, yeah, got it all hooked up. And yeah, I think it looks uh, looks pretty clean. Um, you know, I like the way the front chain ring kind of meshes up with that. It's a FSA crank as well, so I like the way that looks on there. Um, but yeah, anyway, right, getting out and riding in, I definitely, definitely felt smoother. 
just mainly because all the drivetrain was new. Um, but yeah, that's uh, getting it out here on my maiden voyage. And uh, at this point, I've got probably two or three hundred miles on it. Done a couple snow rides. This is the first one. And second one was actually a lot worse. Got a lot of ice built up underneath. And that was the first time that I really had any kind of shift issues with it because it got so much ice built up under the bottom bracket the shift cable couldn't slide anymore so that wasn't really an issue with the derailleur but that's really virtually the only issue I had you can see how much ice build up is on the derailleur on this one in this photo that the last time I wrote it which was yesterday it got quite a bit packed up more but anyway yeah I've got like I say probably two three hundred miles I think at least maybe a little more and haven't had any mishaps or anything um, I, I kind of worried you know there's some of the places where there's a lot of stutter bumps I guess or you know kind of washed out places down some hills and that chains really smacking around and I've yet to throw the chain on it so pretty pretty pleased about that um, so yeah I think it was a definitely a long time coming something I should have done probably a while back uh, but it Definitely like it, especially on this bike. I like that lower, definitely that lower end gear. It's definitely going to help, you know, climbing some really steep grades there. And, you know, and it's something that's easily, if, if you wanted something a little lower, a little higher, you just, you know, change your range up a little bit. You could switch out that front chain ring to the, uh, the more applicable conditions. So for what I'm doing, this pretty much fit perfect, so... Yeah, that's uh, that's the basic gist of it. Uh, hopefully, uh, you found the video helpful. Maybe if you're looking at doing something similar on your own bike. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel. There's always different videos and things similar to this one. So it's gonna do it for this one. See you guys next time.